week. I'm Tom Morris with Delve Into the Void, and I hope everyone's had a great week so far. And what a way to top the week off than with a wonderful discussion. I am going to bring in at this time Jay Wolf Jeremy Holder. How are you doing, Jay Wolf? Hanging in there. Hanging in there. That's good. We uh we talked earlier this week. There was some cool things that happened this week, but there's one thing in particular that we definitely got together and compared notes for. That was actually I'll let you say what it was. WWDC. Which stands for Worldwide Developer Conference. It's an Apple thing, pretty much. An Apple thing. All right. Now, tell us a little bit about this. Uh, what is the WWDC for? They have it every year. And this year was very unique in that it was virtual. Yeah. Um, as we all know, we are all dealing with a certain um, pandemic going on. And we are basically stuck inside. So in order to combat this, this year, their worldwide developer conference was streamed. Now, for some of us who've seen it every year, it was a little different. Because, you know, we're used to, like, big pack audience and every when Apple announced something, <gasps> everybody all clapping off. Um, but this one right here was a lot more production value to it. And I, me personally, I absolutely loved it. Like, I mean, I really did enjoy this more than I thought I would. And it's different because of the fact that usually we get we get multiple announcements from Apple products throughout the year. You know, we have our announcements where they're announcing hardware, like the new iPhone, the new iPad, and uh, so on and so forth. But the WWDC, on the other hand, is mostly all software. So this is where we get our iOS update, our Mac update um, for the software, and our iPad update, and so on and so forth. Agreed. This one was really unique. The one thing that I really liked about it is you're kind of getting a blueprint of where Apple is going, unifying their OSs. And we have the big one is iOS for the iPhone. That is arguably their most popular because it sells the most. But you also have Mac OS. Those were the two that kind of Mac OS and then iOS. Then they split iOS into iPad OS, where they kind of tailored, they're tailoring it more towards the iPad. Then you have TV OS for their Apple TV, and then the watch OS. Whoa, <laughs> that is a lot of OSs. There's also some HomePod OS as well, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what they uh, abbreviate that one as, but I'm pretty sure, you know, it's got his more stripped down OS, so to speak, you know? So, yeah, we got that we're going as well. So, what do you, I'm, I'm going to play some videos as we're talking, and these are general picture videos of just the whole event that was going on during this WWDC yeah, they were just, to me, it was the year that Apple is kind of showing that all roads, they're kind of intertwining with all the OSs. And we haven't even hit on the big one, the big announcement. We'll save that to last. But what was your thought as you started to watch like the state of Apple 2020 and beyond, basically what it was? I would say, it, it to me, this seems like, I think because of the state of the world we're in right now, Apple was just like, you know what? Let's just throw everything and the kitchen sink in. Let's give these, let's give our Apple friend, uh, Apple fans, big happy news. And it just seemed like every feature that we probably most of us was asking for was there. And it just seemed like this was so much more streamlined. Like they, they kind of didn't do as many of the more cornier jokes that they do at WWDC, uh, but it was so fluently and, to me, honestly, action-packed, I would say, um, because of the fact that it was just seemed like over and over again they were moving fast and throwing feature after feature for us. Um, o OS 14 for our iPhones and, for those who got them, iPod Touches as well, definitely came out hidden. I mean, for one thing, one of the features that I think everybody is talking about is widgets. Yes. We know that other companies, we have uh, Android and Google, definitely have had widgets for a while. But for somebody like me who is in the cell phone business, 
widgets definitely well, you're in the cell phone business yeah yeah you make, um, you make cell phones sell them um uh most of you guys know that i did um i was a lead sales manager for metro pcs um i pretty much yeah i i, I had a store that i was the number one salesperson in and actually in like um i had pretty much number one sales for our region um so i definitely did a lot into sell uh i have a lot of experience with android as well not only that but i also have it i have literally the best of both worlds there but the thing is is that with metro <laughs> and also boost they deal more into the entry level the economy level the starting level for android as well so you have these phones with like one gig and two gig um of ram and you know some more of your lower end processors and they have widgets of course because they're android and for years now i anybody who i sort of phone to i would tell them one of the good things about android is the customization but it's a double-edged sword the more you customize the more it takes a hit on the cpu and ram constantly because sure you can have a spotify widget and a weather widget but since it's a widget instead of just the app is taking up more ram and therefore taking up more processing power all the time in layman's terms what is a widget did we so a widget um how do you best describe it is basically what i mean one of the people who did it the best Windows phones had live tiles. It's basically when you have a space in your phone that is live and not only probably um, accessible, but is also constantly updating. For example, one of the things they showed off is the uh, weather widget, where there, without even opening the app, you on the screen itself can display the weather. So this way, you don't even have to open up the app. So widgets are really awesome. They're really great. But at the same time, they also was, like I said, double-edged sword. It was slowing down Android. I, I can't tell you how many Android phones I've seen slowing down because too many widgets and so on. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like w this is one of Apple's main strategies. Sometimes they do they do wait to come out with something because they want to make it. And um, i seen, um, I think his name is uh, Greg. One of the Apple engineers guys, uh, I seen him do an interview, and he said that sometimes they want to wait and make for sure they can bring that wow factor or do it uniquely in an Apple way, where they can, um, so per, so so far as to say, master what it is that they're doing. Right. It's one of the reasons why the iPad doesn't have a calculator app or a weather app because there's so many weather apps and. Apple has been thinking about how to do a calculator, but how can you do a calculator app in a unique way? Because a calculator is so straightforward. I and mean, it's just something you could just easily download off the Apple Store. So that was one of the questions that many people have asked that just got answered. But the same thing with these widgets. It's like Apple waited and said, like, you know, let's look and see how can we make this unique and perfect in a way that is actually take away some of that double edged swordness. You know, and we come to a point now where our phones and our uh, tablets are so ridiculously powerful. Mm -hmm. We look at the power behind the A13 Bionic and look how strong this is, how a phone can run. 4K video and edit and everything, and you could build websites off of phones. So now we have we're at the point where these iPhones are so strong that they can handle widgets easily without the slowing down, the crashing, the stuttering, and so on and so forth. You know, even look at the lowest iPhone that's available right now. The iPhone SE has that A13 Bionic chip, insane amount of power. Yeah, and it, let's uh, move to the iPad OS just because. A lot of the stuff is together, yep. but you're getting the widgets. You're getting the widgets on both. You're getting certain apps a the little app bit library. more. library? Yes. Don't um, forget, that's a game changer too. Oh, definitely, where you take and instead of having to put all your games into the the little, I want to call it like a little folder, it will do it for you. Yeah. And it will do it at the last page is where you, a um, few pages. I think, yeah, that I think that's definitely big. Also, when you're scanning what is um, called App Clip, that is really awesome. Where I think you that's going to download. be a super big game changer, especially for mm -hmm. more bigger cities and so on, like the, the yes. examples they showed with bike riding. Um, I, I know for one, me personally, 
I have definitely tried to get my mom to download all the apps as possible. McDonald's, Burger King, you know, Subway and so on, especially food and restaurant apps. But I could see app clips being a way where this way I could say, mom, just go ahead and hover your phone over this, this stand right here. And, yep. you know, she could get the coupons and so on. You know, like these are ways that developers and other places, like especially retail, can get people to their yeah. app faster. I definitely agree. Uh, so what, do you, what did you think of uh, uh, one thing you touched upon and I thought was awesome, just the way – that this presentation flew, the flow of it, the people, it felt, even though we were virtual, the production value was awesome, but you felt more intimate with the individuals that were talking during this event, that there was a, a personality to it that we, that I don't want to say it hasn't been there, but even more so this year, it just felt like there was personality with the presenters. Yeah, amplified. Mm hmm. Because because uh, one thing about it, we're not seeing them just walk on stage. We're actually seeing them more in like, I would say their natural habitat, as you saw, like you saw the um, watch fitness, uh, the watch guy yeah. in uh, the workout room. So we could not only see the presenters in a more natural setting, but also I would say the background helped a lot. And then we also got more of a view of Apple themselves, like their whole yeah. You know, UFO, um, the spaceship, uh, the spaceship. spaceship. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, I, I loved it. Like, also, it makes me want to get a new drone. I really think I want to get a new drone now. Like, their drone work was amazing. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, the whole, the whole presentation from beginning to end, just as you're looking at some of the pictures of the individuals that were presenting each of the different, uh, sections, I thought it was great. I, I mm -hmm. really felt immersed in a way that if we were there, you know, if only, if we were there, I don't think we would have felt that intimacy with the sets. You know, I, I, it just was awesome to me. It was, def it was definitely very new, very different, but familiar at the same time. And it, yes. it, it, to me, it was the most Apple way thing to do it. You know, that's Apple. It's like, you know, when they come out with something new, but yet it's also familiar, it, it had that same sense to their presentation style and i absolutely love like i said i i had i had hopes for it but then i also had some doubts for it because like oh no it's going to be streaming you know you're not going to get that like when they announce something big everyone all clapping you don't you didn't get that part but at the same time it was very unique and actually better to me like i was so hyped after any big new announcement that mm -hmm. you know like i said the app library is one thing for sure because like especially when it comes to ipad when you look at that a um that a chip that they have on there it is so strong it is so great and i feel like they really should bring back the game center you know like i'm one of those people who definitely missed it and loved it and i felt like that I should have a more gaming central focus but with the app library able to go ahead and smartly make certain folders for games for uh the uh Apple Arcade and so on. I feel like that is them not only organizing their entire your entire app library, but also now they'll have to search. And I tell you, if you looked at my phone, I have literally pages and pages and pages and pages and pages. I don't have to search pages trying and to I find a game. I have seen your phone. I have yeah. seen your. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen yeah. your phone. I, I have seen your uh, screens. Yes, they. You just swipe, even with folders. Swipe, swipe, even with yes. folders. It's just. You know, I have the 512 um, gigabyte iPhone and I have the one terabyte iPad. And every time I say that, people be like, wow, there's so much storage. What do you put on there? I'm like, a lot of things. Like I do all my <laughs> video editing on there. I have my, not only do I do my video editing, I have all my music on there. Yes, but I do do a lot of apps because one thing about it, back, especially back in the day, not only on here were we talking about apps, but also even pre-Delve into the Void days, my cousin actually had a uh, newspaper that she was working on and everything. And I would do my own section in there, like, I think it was called like Appetite or something. But every, I think it was like two weeks or so, but I would, I would have fresh apps that I had curated and, you know, talked about and, you know, why you should and why you shouldn't get this and so on and so forth. So, you know, I have definitely been through my fair share of apps in every category. Mm -hmm.